So as you now know, folks, we've got Joe Biden who has decided to exit the race. I mean, for a man that's done so much, right? And you know he's done a lot when you've got Republicans, for example, that are taking credit for a bill that he basically passed, the Infrastructure Act. You've got so many Republicans out there saying, I, I think that's a great deal. You know, look what I did. And they had nothing to do with it. In fact, most of them voted no. When you've got that kind of legislation going on, you're doing something right. When Republicans vote no and take credit for it, you've done something right. And what a shining star of a president, folks. Um, a man, arguably, who's done more than any president has in the past 30 years. Um, I think he's been called the most underrated president. But the one thing that he did, folks, that we, we just have to give him credit for is jumping into the ring and ending the reign of Donald Trump, making him a one-term president. Thank God. The chaos of COVID, the chaos of the mask, the chaos of the bleach, right? <laughs> the march on the Capitol, the fake electors. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. The total disregard for anything to do with ecology, right? Just rolling back protections on the environment. And, and Biden put an end to that. And I, I don't think we fully recognize the value of that because we didn't have to go through a second term of straight hell with Donald Trump. We, we don't recognize the value of what Biden did. But folks, now that the media has got something else to fixate on, they can, they can end it. All of that coverage that they were doing with Joe Biden, remember that fixation on every syllable that Joe Biden would say, everything that he said, every facial expression. I mean, it was absolutely insane. Absolutely insane, folks. And the whole time, Donald Trump is running around like an escapee from a mental institution. And he was out there at Grand Rapids, Michigan, just yesterday, saying that he took a bullet for democracy after he was shot in the year during an assassination attempt against, as you all know. So here's a guy, folks, who basically has got, now he's down to two Band-Aids on his ear. Two Band-Aids. They're folded over because he doesn't want anyone to see a scratch. What kind of a guy is this? Most of us work in the garden. I mean, he's got a scratch, right? He's got a scratch. I knew he got shot. It's terrible. But he's got a scratch. Started off with a big white cuff of a bandage. Now he's down to two band-aids gently folded over. Why? Nobody cares. My God. I mean, anybody in the course of a normal life has been cut or something. You know? We don't go crazy with the bandages. But this guy does. Because he's done nothing but sit at Mar-a-Lago and in Trump Tower and then ride around on the golf cart. So, I mean, he's never had a scratch, evidently. But he's got these two bandages on. Absolutely insane. And he says, when referring to democracy and this whole thing about taking a bullet for it, he says, I don't want to know anything about it. But what they do is misinformation and disinformation, and they keep saying he's a threat to democracy, Donald Trump continued, obviously referring to Democrats. Donald Trump says, I'm saying, what the hell did I do for democracy? Last week, I took a bullet for democracy. You did not take a bullet for democracy. Our military takes bullets for democracy. When you had the chance to serve in the military, you came up with a whole litany of excuses for bone spurs to keep you out of the military. So no, I'm not buying that argument. And I think most Americans aren't either. But he also said this, folks, he's obviously upset about this whole Project 2025 thing, and we know that most of the people that wrote the Project 2025 document were a part of his administration, but he seems to know nothing about it. And now he's lying about it. He's lying about the fact that he knows nothing about Project 2025. He said they're seriously extreme, but I don't know anything about it. Trump said during that rally in Grand Rapids, Michigan, while speaking about Project 2025, and folks, we know it's a lie. I mean, we're not, we're not stupid. We know it because we've seen it and we've heard it. Going to hell. Have a listen to this. The critical job of institutions such as Heritage is to 
lay the groundwork, and Heritage does such an incredible job at that. Incredible. This is a great group, and they're going to lay the groundwork and detail plans for exactly what our movement will do and what your movement will do when the American people give us a colossal mandate to save America. And that's coming. No, they're not. That's coming. No. No. So he knows nothing about it, but then he stood there and said that they laid the groundwork for what we're going to do. So, folks, either he's totally off his rocker and he's lost it, which is possible, or he's lying, or he thinks that we won't remember what he said. I mean, either way, it's a cluster, right? And the guy's got, there's something not right about him. I mean, you stand there, you could show him this video. And he would debate it with you. He, he would literally debate. I didn't say that. What, what? I mean, that's what we're dealing with here. I mean, issues, mental issues, cognitive issues, serious issues. Right? I mean, things that, that should rule out him being present. Not to mention the fact, you know, the, the whole capital raid right on the capital thing and all that business. Not to mention the fake electors and all that business. I mean, stuff like this. I mean, he's lying, or he's ignorant, or he's, something's wrong. We don't know. We, we don't know. And, and that's the problem with this guy. You, you don't know what he's going to do. If he's going to lie about this, would he lie about Putin? Yeah. I mean, you can't trust him. You just can't. You just can't trust Donald Trump. And folks, now that they're not fixating on, you know, this whole thing with Joe Biden... Now that they're not fixating on that, I think that they're going to turn to who is going to be the VP candidate. And to that end, folks, I think that Senator Mark Kelly from Arizona is one of the best choices that we could ever make for VP. Kelly flew combat missions during the Gulf War as a naval aviator before being selected as a NASA space shuttle pilot in 1996. Flew over like 5.7 million miles in his role with NASA. NASA. As you know, his wife was shot when she was meeting with constituents back in 2011. And after she was shot, they formed this political action committee in 2013 called Americans for Responsible Solutions. The organization's mission was to promote solutions to gun violence with elected officials and the general public. The couple say it supports the Second Amendment while promoting responsible gun ownership and keeping guns out of the hands of dangerous people like criminals, terrorists, and the mentally ill. Maybe like the guy that shot at Donald Trump. And folks, it, um, when it comes to political positions, he ran as a moderate in 2020 and voiced support for bipartisanship. Since joining the Senate, he supported abolishing the filibuster in order to pass voting rights legislation. He also supported a federal minimum wage increase to $15 an hour. He's criticized Joe Biden's approach to border security. As of October 2022, Kelly has voted in line with Biden's stated position 94.5% of the time. He's pro-choice, and you just can't do much better than this guy for VP. And I think that, obviously, Cam Kamala is the, the lead, and she's the candidate for president. Totally agree with that. I think she's going to do a great job. But Mark Kelly as VP someday would make a hell, one hell of a president too. Something to think about, folks. Till next time.